They fired me. They refuse to accept that there are real problems at this center. The Office Diva is a simulation of a monstrous ego, whining and writhing as she obsesses over her life. The center is being badly run. I begin to realize that Peter is a weak director. He can't stand up to the others. I reorganized the reception area. I rationalized the filing system. It's much more efficient now. I can get at anything and everything just by swiveling my chair. Conceptually, the project is a reproduction and examination of a consciousness ruled by manic depression. But she is also a machine, and the work plays with the ways in which mad and machinic behavior can be interpreted in similar ways. We deliberately chose a bland machine voice that speaks the stream of consciousness text which is generated, reordered, and reassembled by a machinic algorithm. But, just as deliberately, we massage the relationship between text and code so that our mad consciousness is not so badly fragmented and fractured as to be indecipherable to a human audience. The graphics represent another synthesis between machine and human. Procedural animation creates the fire or rain cloud that takes on a dimly human form reanimated with motion capture. A library of motion captured actions has been recorded in advance. The Office Diva is an audiovisual installation, a large scale projection of a computer controlled character living in a claustrophobic virtual space and compulsively talking. Over time, the bland voice reveals a mad, sad story. They fired me. They refuse to accept that there are real problems at this center. Peter's office is well organized, but the other counselors leave patient files everywhere. Most of them are half open with papers spilling out. It's a clear violation of confidentiality. Jenny has therapy sessions with Peter. It's a complete conflict of interest for the director to give therapy to the counselors. It's not done. Peter should know better. I'm not sure that he's fit to be the director of this center. The center is being badly run. I begin to realize that Peter is a weak director. He can't stand up to the others. Sarah went to pee between sessions and popped her head around the waiting room door looking for her next patient. She looked from the room back at me so fast she nearly got a whiplash. Apparently, the cactus was I threw out were from Peter's collection. There was no harm done. They were all out back by the garbage bins. I put them in his room. At the meeting, the extraordinary staff meeting, Peter said that messing with Jenny's files was the last straw. They said they had told me over and over again to stick to my job. My job is receptionist. I answer the phones, type occasional reports, keep the appointment books and file. Peter said I was only to file the business papers. I was not to interfere with the private and confidential filing of each counselor. Last summer I was specifically requested to help with some filing in Simon's office. They are completely inconsistent. They can't fire me for doing too good a job. Of course I shall take them to a tribunal. The union will support me. There was no proper procedure. They are meant to give three clear warnings, explaining what the performance problems are. What are the problems? Arriving too early? Leaving too late? Making sure things are correct? Caring too much 